What is up, pilgrims? Tis I, Alex, the Boogeyman here with your focus point of the week. And speaking of pilgrims, of course, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, right? And you think about pilgrims sailing across the great ocean on a boat for weeks and months on end, facing incredible risk, incredible risk to their lives, to their health. Many people didn't even make it, right? So in boxing, right, we put ourselves at risk every time we throw a punch. Not the same kind of risk, still somewhat mortal danger, right? So we're gonna talk about risks, and of course some punches are riskier than others, right? Every punch is risky, but certain ones are definitely more risky, and that's what we're gonna focus on this week. We're gonna focus on taking the big risk, the high risk punches, but of course giving them a high reward. Now every time there is a risk, what you wanna do is mitigate. You wanna find ways to make that risk less risky. So that's what we're gonna talk about here. All right, so that first risky punch we're gonna work on this week is that overhand right. Well, if your right hand is an overhand right, it's your rear hand coming over the top. Why is it so risky? Because it's a big commitment, right? I'm doing a big motion with my arm, I'm dropping down, I'm moving my head, I'm bringing a lot of weight to that front foot, so if I were to miss the overhand, or he were to block the overhand, I wouldn't be in as good of a position to react. So how do we mitigate this risk? Well, number one, we wanna make sure, and something you hear me say all the time, that left knee or that lead knee, you need to bend that knee when you drop down. This does a few things. Number one, unrelated to the point, you get more power. You're really dropping that weight down nice and hard, using your weight as a hammer. So allow yourself to react a little bit better, right? So if I throw that punch and I do miss, I'm down in a low athletic stance. It's easier for me to maneuver. If I'm tall and my leg is straight, it's gonna be a lot harder to dodge punches, throw another punch, whatever. And again, you're gonna have less power. Another thing we do with the overhand right, make sure again we cover non-punching side when we throw it, but also even your punching side, by rotating your wrist all the way to that thumbs down position, as you can see, I'm getting my shoulder up to block my own cheek. So if I have to, I can potentially absorb a punch right there. Next risky punch we're gonna do, number two, is actually the number two, the cross. But of course, not just any cross, stepping in behind your cross. So leading with a cross and stepping forward. Many boxers never do this. It can be very dangerous, right? Because number one, your opponent can see it coming a little bit better with that rear hand. Number two, I'm stepping forward. I could just run into a punch. If you times me, I run into a punch. That's even worse. So to mitigate this, one thing you could do is dress it up a little bit, right? Just because I'm going to come in and leave with a cross. He doesn't need to know that, right? So I can fake. I can fake some other punches, fake some other punches, and then step in. Maybe I fake low, get his hands down, step in. The other big thing about stepping forward, throwing a cross, coming forward, even if it's not leading the combination, is you need to start the motion before you step in or just as you're stepping in so that your punch lands and reaches full extension as soon as you get into range. If I step into range and throw the cross, number one, I'm gonna short across. Number two, I've just put myself at risk. Now I can be hit before I even got a punch going. So I'm gonna go behind my punch, almost like a jouster going behind their lance. Next punch we're gonna sew that's risky and work on is just your garden variety rear uppercut, right? So that's for me, my right hand coming up under the chin. I'm dipping down, coming out. Why is this so risky? Well, in a lot of those punches I talked about with the overhand, you can use your shoulder to block potentially. When you throw the uppercut, you can't. You're just naked on this side. There's nothing you can do. You gotta get your hand back quickly or roll or whatever, right? The punch is coming. But for that second, you are wide open for that lead hook, for your opponent's left hook when you throw your right uppercut, right? So what do we do to mitigate that? Well, the big thing is, and I say this all the time too, do not drop your hands. This takes longer. It's easier to see and you're wide open. Instead, dip down, use your legs, dip down quickly. You don't need to drop your hand at all. If you do drop it at all, drop it as you're delivering the punch, not before you start to deliver the punch. The difference is huge. Again, your opponent will see it. You'll be open longer. Your hand is further away from you, so there's more area to cover if you have to cover. So make sure, again, we're not dropping our hand. Instead, we're using our legs. When we throw in a combination, right? I throw my left hook, right? I'm already starting to dip down and come throw that uppercut. And as soon as I throw that uppercut, boom, I'm bringing my hand back to guard that side of my head. We talked about that last week. Now you may notice a trend here. All these punches that we've been throwing have been with my rear hand, my dominant hand, which for me is my right hand. What about the lead? First of all, why is that? Because your rear hand, and I already kind of touched on it, is easier to see coming 
for your opponent. It also has to travel a slightly longer distance to get there. And those little milliseconds and millimeters matter, right? So just for fun though, I don't wanna work on all rear hand punches. We're gonna do something on the lead side. Now this is very risky, incredibly risky, but I love it. It's the gazelle punch, the leaping forward. Now normally we do the like gazelle punch, it's a hook, but you could also be like Prince Nassim Hamed, throw that uppercut, Roy Jones Jr. did that too. You could even leap forward and throw that body shot or that liver shot. Very dangerous, why? Because once again, not only are you coming forward, but you're leaping forward. You're actually leaving the ground to throw that punch. Oh my goodness. Definitely don't want to run into a punch. It'll look like a real idiot if that happens. So once again, just like with our overhand, right? With, I'm sorry, with our stepping cross or with any punch, really, you can dress it up. So don't let them know that you're going to throw that leaping lead hook or that, that gazelle punch, right? Maybe fake a jab to the body, come around, throw it. The other thing too, when you, even though I am leaping forward, yes, you don't want to get high. Right? You jump way up in the air. No, that's extra time that you can't do anything to defend yourself. And if the guy moves out of the way, you're really in trouble. Right? So you want to stay low. Even though I'm leaping, I'm actually getting a little bit lower when I come forward. I'm taking off the ground. You have to be explosive. It's an athletic move, for sure. That's why not everybody likes to do it. But it can be really effective and really fun and really explosive. So we're going to work on those as well. These are risky punches. We're in the risk-taking business this week, just like those pilgrims were all those years ago. So get ready to take some risks, but reap some great rewards, because that is how we do it, pilgrims!